Good morning um, and welcome to the U United States Institute of Peace. We are very, very honored to have with us uh, today His Holiness the 17th Gwalyang Karmapa uh, and the head of the Karmakagyu School of Tibetan Buddhism. Um, I also want to welcome and to acknowledge uh, some of the many who have accompanied His Holiness, especially uh, Zongjin uh, Panlap Rinpoche, uh, with whom we've worked to organize this event, and he's been a wonderful partner, very enthusiastic and, and wonderful to work with. Um, this is uh, an especially auspicious occasion for me, as many years ago I had the, the great honor of studying with uh, Chokinima Rinpoche in in Kathmandu, uh, who is a part of uh, the same school. And so this is just wonderful to have Your Holiness here with us today at the USIP. Um, as many of you know, um, His Holiness has a, a truly dramatic story uh, based on your escape uh, from Tibet in 1999, uh, where uh, when you traveled, and I, having lived in Nepal, and I know the the difficulty of that passage and over those mountains. And so it is, it is um, truly wonderful that you were able to do that and now reside in Dharamsala uh, next to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. We, are, we, we have had um, an important tradition uh, here at USIP of uh, trying to contribute to the ways in which faith leaders can be a part of the peace building process. We have with us David Smock, who was for many years uh, the architect of that program, and I'm very pleased to, to have here Susan Hayward, uh, who runs that program now. And this is an important part of how we understand um, conflict needs to be understood, and the voices of faith leaders and of religious leaders like His Holiness are in a special, uh, influential, and, and important way for us to, to, to think about these critical issues of how to build peace, of how to use uh, compassion and wisdom, especially as a foundation for understanding our way through the kind of conflicts that continue to rip our world apart. Um, so His Holiness will make a few remarks and then we'll have an opportunity for people to ask some questions. And with that, thank you, thank you so much for joining us here thank today. You. Um, That in the USIP, and a and Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank everyone who here who's made it possible uh, for me to have this opportunity to visit you at the USIP, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here. And um, that didn't do the Zumilia, she said, Cash me in Bazum the Master Betty, Kadruja Tedo, that's in Zadrak, Nedanuchi, she did well, sad, and Dana Jimimang Lea Katre. Then Jack was at it, Tedo, that's a rather Nedan of Chadi or it, and then you dig in Saint Dene, and not to see Chulu Kim. That would be swim in at it. Nowadays, our world is so filled with conflict that everyone uh, is thinking seriously about how we can find a solution and discover a way to become at peace. This has actually become an emergency and a, an ever-present danger for many people throughout the world. I think that one thing that would help in this regard is if 
religious leaders and political leaders were to meet together to uh, share their uh, skills and their thinking and help one another find a solution uh, to this. And then you say, DJ Daichi, you say, P, that is me say, and I was a rich young king and that is a CD chair, and it doesn't so day, and I should have the Jeffy Ram Charge on songs, Tiggy, and that is Sidilla, Tonsin Chavatam, a Sidilla, Sidisad Kesham Yimbachi, Timber recognized Chavra Tonga, Tonga is some chunky. Andre, <coughs> But I rejoice in the existence of the USIP because this is, after all, a branch of the United States government, specifically formed for the purpose of and wholly devoted to the cause of peace. I think this, its existence is also a proof of the recognition by this government that peace is of great importance. Of course, the idea of peace and the understanding of the necessity of peace are not enough. To achieve peace will require a complete commitment, complete devotion. And even beyond that, it will require that we first achieve peace within our own hearts. We also need to be able to extend ourselves. We need to extend ourselves to others and to other societies. We need more love, more compassion, more kindness, and much deeper sense of our interconnectedness. Whether it be between different religions, between different nations, between different peoples, we need to come to a greater awareness of our interdependence and our interconnectedness. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have too much else to say, um, except again, I would want you to know how really delighted I am to be here and to have received an extremely warm welcome from your president and members of your board, and, and all of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Your Holiness, for your remarks. It's truly an honor to have you here. Uh, I am Susan Hayward, the Interim Director of the Religion and Peace Building Program here at the Institute. And we're going to open it up now for discussion. So if you have questions, um, please just indicate by raising your hand and make sure that you push the, the, the speak button so that we can hear you and it gets recorded properly. Um, and please identify yourself and your organization. But I'm gonna take moderator's prerogative here and ask the first question, if I could, to get us started. So Your Holiness, um, you have taken, a, well, first of all, let me say that what you have to say about the interdependence of people around the world and the need for us to recognize, to have the wisdom to see that interconnectivity between people is so important to the cause of peace. Um, at, at USIP, we recognize the ways in which multiple 
factors and drivers mutually feed one another and lead to the arising of violence and of suffering. And in order to find effective and sustainable solutions to those problems, we have to see how these drivers feed one another and how we all have to play a role in helping to resolve them and transform them and bring peace. So interdependence helps, understanding interdependence helps us understand the solutions to really addressing the factors that drive violent conflict. Um, so I really appreciate that and connected with that. But I also wanted to ask you, you, you have spoken out recently in support of ordination for women within the Tibetan monastic order. And this is also something in the religion program that we've put a lot of attention on, on the role of women within religious traditions and the role that they can play, particularly in supporting peace. And so I wonder if you could speak a little bit about how you see women's ordination within the Tibetan order as, as, as um, being an issue of peace. Community Stage Naare, え、ジェス。あ、カルシュ。ペアルブジュ。ペアルブトセブ。ナズリンジュスティジュンゼンテネ。カンダティギュンゼンテネタカゾディカルシュンスナ。タプメリアジュ。ジュ。ジュ。ジュ
Can you hear me? Okay, I guess he can now. The establishment of a supportive community is of great importance. Um, during the Buddha's lifetime, uh, many women who had experienced great challenges in their lives uh, were able to gather together and form a supportive community, a sangha of uh, ordained uh, women, female monastics. But the issue of the reestablishment <coughs> of full ordination uh, for women in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition is goes beyond simply the establishment of the uh, full ordination itself, because it is uh, an important stepping stone in the restoration of women's rights in using the religious or, or spiritual tradition of Tibetan Buddhism uh, to do that. For this reason, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has over the last 20 or even 30 years um, been discussing how we can actually uh, restore the bhikshuni or the full monastic ordination for women in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. <coughs> and uh, His Holiness's work on this and devotion to this cause has inspired me and caused me over time to begin to really understand and appreciate the great importance of the reestablishment of this ordination. The reason we've been waiting so long to do it is we wanted to put enough uh, research into the matter so that when it is done, it will be done in an undisputably valid way so that all lineages of Tibetan Buddhism accept it. However, at this point, 20 or 30 years into the discussion, it's evident that it would still take a long time to get everyone on board. So I feel that if one lineage begins, then the others will follow. That is my hope. So therefore, uh, I will uh, begin this. It's important, however, to understand that the purpose of this is to establish not only the right to full ordination, but equal rights in all aspects of Tibetan religious culture. Education, status, and rank fully equal to that of male uh, monastics. Another reason why this is so important is that women innately have a little more wisdom and a little more kindness uh, than men do. <coughs> and so to, sit, to put it bluntly, you didn't say little? All right. I'm trying to be. <laughs> Women are a lot wiser and a lot kinder than men, and therefore uh, giving them the authority to use their innate wisdom and kindness will uh, do the Buddhist tradition a great deal of good. I'd like to open up the conversation. Is there anybody who has a question? Bill. Your Holiness, thank you very much. I, I, my question is, is a personal one, and I actually have two if I could be greedy about this. I'd like to know about your personal, um, in your personal journey, your relationship with your teacher. Um, if you could talk a little bit about that, what your teacher has meant to you, and I think if connected with that and connected with your last statement about the fact that women have so much to teach us. One of the things that I, I look at with some concern sometimes is, is that process of taking a young child from their mother uh, at a very early point in life and just surrounded by these men who I'm sure can share many yeah. teachings and many empowerments, but I think there's also challenges in, in, involved in that process. And I wonder if you could reflect on that a little bit yeah. for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tad tiiko oli jääd, ka lõis lauda. Ma söögi kasvulede Javale Tsümane ta mangutsi, ta Tsümane tiis Java ta. Java tinde enne ji, ta Java sööes on arvada, ta ji puhu kase lo sümsisid vaja Java sööin tinde jaanud ta nga lo dünliya ta mashi ta chaba so so mona chun ore lo dünliya ta kama bu zi chebre tene ji kama ta khatai tu chumre 
Anne, Pomada Cate, Tarazelia, and Tavazulia, and Dark and the Jig Marche, Giganda, Jig, this Gamber de Gorge de Are. The Marche and Jig the Pumin de Jimbina, the Chamzi, Chamjon Charity, so Cabodor. The Gabo Chorat is so Chamjo, this is Dasha Jig, Cheshire Marbata. Did this cover shot that is. And the Indusan. Sosin kabul şardı. İmbi ne tan azım filmi gidecek başlıyor. Süygün gider bir nere karı imbi ne tan kandır cidden ki gelen maşet diş çakur şardı. İmbi ne tan azı ki başlıyor cidden. Daha dizüstüyor. Sosur So, the Lord of the Child is the same as the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the Child of the non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che sia una cosa che non mi giuro che The girls are going to be able to get the same thing. The same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same When you become a monk or a nun, especially if you become a monk, which can happen uh, really in, in, in somewhat early childhood, you are separated uh, from your parents. I was separated from my parents at the age of seven when uh, I became uh, the Karmapa, or was recognized as the Karmapa. And after that, I was surrounded by um, tutors and other old people. Of course, we all know that, um, in general, women are uh, more affectionate than men. They uh, are more skillful. La. Detail. Detail? I don't know how detail would fit in there. Women are more affectionate uh, than men. Men, in general, have a hard time uh, showing or displaying affection. Most of my tutors and most tutors in my tradition are pretty tough. But gradually, students come to an appreciation of how kind and their tutors are and what a tremendous contribution their tutors have made, uh, their teachers have made to their lives. Although usually we come to this appreciation after we've grown up and we have the perspective to realize what we gained uh, under their guidance and teaching. So in a sense, our teachers become even more kind to us and even more influential in some ways than our parents. Another thing is that um, there are different ways of showing love. And in general, I would say that the way uh, Tibetans show love is less expressly demonstrative than oh, it is true in the West. Westerners, not all, but typically tend to be more openly demonstrative. They demonstrate their love for others in their facial expressions, gestures, and so forth. Tibetans do this too, of course, but, in, but it's far more common for Tibetans to demonstrate their love for you by scolding you and uh, trying to help you in that way. So, As I gradually came to understand this, it wasn't really too hard 
uh, for me. At the, for the first year, well, after being separated from my parents at the age of seven, it was difficult. But then I became used to it and have not uh, suffered too much from it. And we know you, you remain, and cognizant that you remain separated from your family, because they're still back in Tibet, except for your sister, who's with us here today. Other questions? Uh, hi, my name is Ariana Barth. Uh, I work here at the U.S. Institute of Peace. And like everyone here, I'm very grateful uh, that you were able to join us. Uh, so there are probably 40, 45 people in this room and 40 or 45 opinions, but I'm really curious what you think about um, why people choose violence to achieve what they want and what we can do about that. Thank you. Kajuda, <laughs> And I think that the people who are living in the world are living in the the world. They are living in the world. They are living in the world. Mui だって ジャブレアテンシェ、エナジョアジュビアテ、ティスレラユエソチ。ネガプチンビティリアチ、ティスカジュレテ、レラワサナミドタカンダチ、ティスシュゲンチェエヴァドチ。シュワチアベレダチ
who don't tell them the truth, deceive them with distortions or one-sided uh, explanations of complex situations, and by doing so repeatedly, uh, convince their followers who subsequently become fanatics willing to engage in acts of violence and terrorism. Also, many terrorists are living in a state of desperation. Their hopes have been dashed, and they conceive the, of the idea that the only way to get what they want or get what they want done is through violence. They conceive of the common misconception that violence is more powerful than peace. And so I think these are the major factors, and especially ignorance and prejudgment, prejudice and the one-sided knowledge of a complex situation. Beyond that, I don't have uh, much more to say about that. Susan? Hello, I'm Susan Lawrence with the Congressional Research Service. I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about your plans for the full ordination of women in your lineage. Um, what's the timeline for this? Do you have a timeline and what steps have you taken already and what do you anticipate you will need to do to make that happen? Thank you. ตัดดูสิเอ่อตัดตังบุตรเลยอ่ะจุกี้คอมมิชชั่นดูซูซิตัดดีตัวเนี่ยเอ็นจีกับเรอออร์ดิเนชั่นเชียร์ดีชาซ
Specifically, in the year 2016, uh, probably in March or April, uh, we will begin. Now, the full ordination uh, for women has two steps. There's the, um, the post-novitiate, but pre-full ordination, which is done first. And then those women who have received that and lived according to it for two years then become eligible for the final uh, full uh, ordination. Then, so we'll do the first step of this in 2016 and the second step, therefore, in 2018. Then uh, we'll have to wait 10 years after which those women who received the full ordination in 2018 will become what are called elders and authorized to uh, bestow that ordination uh, on other women. Because what we want to establish is a community of Tibetan women fully ordained who can bestow uh, the ordination that they themselves have received on other women. Up to now, what has happened is uh, some women have received the full ordination in the Chinese Buddhist tradition but it has not yet been reestablished in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Now, if you uh, do the math, I'll be 40 by the time uh, these women can bestow the ordination on other women, which is another reason why I feel we can't wait any longer. Otherwise, I would wait till then I'd be 50 or 60, and the, you know, so I want to get it done now. I noticed people started getting less shy, and we had a number of hands go up. And so I'm going to collect a few questions now, and then His Holiness can answer it, and we'll hopefully have time for one more round after that. So I saw Mateo, Audrey, James. We'll do those three now, and then we'll come back for Jackie and Lo Song and anyone else. Um, good morning, Your Holiness. <clears throat> the, um, the first time I saw you or met you actually was at your monastery in Tibet more than 15 years ago. And uh, that sort of <clears throat> gets to my question is, what do you think are the prospects uh, for, your, for you actually returning to Tibet, either to visit uh, or possibly to relocate? And I suppose that that um, brings into question uh, the various circumstances that you see uh, that needed to happen for a peaceful resolution between Tibet and China. Good morning, Your Holiness. Um, in a speech that you did at Boston, um, you talked about cultivating compassion. And even amongst the Buddhist community and the world in general, you know, uh, you know, oftentimes we really struggle with how do we cultivate that, uh, that in our lives. So what can you share um, that may be insightful that we can, how do we cultivate this compassion in our lives, in our personal lives, in our organizations, um, and how we interact with the world in general? Uh, good morning. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you and, and members of your community, sir. I'm just curious when you speak about the, the full equality of women within the hierarchy, how will that affect the search for um, reincarnation? Um, 
딱 간지인 베스트로베 표기 표 표기 표미소리 펜더 예비나 아는 겨볼로 용기 인사를 붙이다 니지 이기지 티어래 제상 아는 수용두네 니지 표리야 수다 카테야디 텐도 카테어지 마인베지 양양게르 용토야지 니지 자 니지 카르 자와르 니지 챔버 두스체지 두스체야래 안다다니 다나시래 안드레인 주스다네 지당기 카슈르다지 아랑펠 로아사디 디스 카슈르 갈라카브르치 에 에다 갈라카브스마르다지 뇨르 사브르치 차디와레 이네야 뇨르 사브 이밀 마드바르 다간다지 소소이다 베디 소소이다 게사 사사르부지레라 안 베베슈다지 슝디 베그 뉴주 니버텔리아 다 니와라 류데브르치 ドスレビンジュスタンタディテダンジ。うん。カメジェワチアルブチ。タディンアジュジ。ディセムシャワタシブジケチムチャリガルソムトゥンドン。アンタナンディニジュタナンシンゲペンヤワルムチルブチイミ
the Chinese government can come to recognize that this is an issue that in various ways impacts and concerns all humanity. And if on that basis a dialogue happens between Dharamsala and Beijing, then that might be the beginning of our being able to return. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> ジジャーディアルジギ。カルバダジ。エムジュ。シンパシーサマルバダジ。ミギ。ガンエリア。アンダーステンディ。サマルバダジ。チェデブ。チュボウママイバ。エムジジャーディ。タカンダルジ。
This connection is so profound, so central to the very value of our lives that it is not, it goes far beyond from being a philosophical concept. It actually is the central factor in our whole way of life. So self and others are not as separate as we think they are. We are each part of others. It is by understanding this that we will become willing or that we can become willing to undertake responsibility for others' well-being and furthermore undertake that responsibility with enthusiasm and courage. I think that enthusiastic courage, that inspiration to undertake responsibility for others is the basis of true compassion. We need to uh, break down the wall of selfishness that usually surrounds us. And we need to uh, change in that way or uh, with, because without doing so, uh, true compassion will not arise within us. Um, Pumegatrugusamadi Chisum Pumigatrugumangbuji Pumelia The next question was about uh, whether uh, the uh, empowerment of women in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition will um, have an effect on the uh, tulku system, the rebirth, uh, the reborn or reincarnated Lama recognition system. There actually already are uh, female uh, tulkus or reincarnated Lamas, but Proportionally, they are so few compared to the number of male tulkus that you could almost say uh, there aren't any. There actually are some, but they're so few. But this is primarily, I think, for social reasons. And therefore, as women are more empowered, given more respect, more authority, more empowerment, they will naturally have a much greater opportunity um, to become religious leaders, including uh, the recognition of them as tulkus. There has never been a rule in Tibetan Buddhism that women uh, could not be tulkus, but because this, the outlook of the society toward women in general was not especially positive, uh, there have been very few. Nevertheless, as you indicated in your question, uh, once women are afforded a full support for leadership roles, 
um, there will be more. Jackie, Lo Song, and the others, I'm sorry, but I'm cognizant of the time and of the DC traffic, and I want to make sure that we honor His Holiness's schedule and the need for them to depart shortly. But Nancy, if you could take us away. I just want to thank you again, Your Holiness, for joining us today. Um, we're deeply grateful for the words that you have brought to us, the opportunity for all of us to come together and really reflect again on the importance of, of, of compassion and of how we might, um, both as individuals and in our various organizations, contribute to, to bring greater peace to the world and, and ending violent conflict. And thank you especially for your um, leadership and, and real inspiration on, on um, bringing women into full ordination. This thank is um, the kind of inclusion um, that globally will, will have enormous impact. So thank you very much, and on behalf of all of us, we wish you uh, peaceful and, and wonderful journeys uh, for the rest of your time here in the United thank States. You. Thank you.